Hey guys, and welcome to the Moms and Murder podcast. You know we're always interested in learning about new cases, and so today we're excited to bring you a preview of a new true crime podcast that covers a story you might not be so familiar with. It's called Death of an Artist, and we're really excited about it. In the early hours of September 8th, 1985, up-and-coming artist Anna Mendieta fell from the 34th window of the New York City apartment she shared with her husband, the famous sculptor Carl Andre. Carl was charged with murder, and the art world split in two. There were those who couldn't believe such an artistic genius was capable of that kind of violence, and there was those people who blamed him for Anna's death. Carl and Anna were a textbook example of opposites attract, a white man known for minimalist sculptures and a Cuban woman breaking barriers for performance art. It could have been a love story between two fascinating and talented people, but instead, it's a tragedy. In Death of an Artist, art historian Helen Molesworth revisits Anna's untimely death, the trial that followed, and both the protest and silence that have accompanied the story ever since. In this preview, we hear a reenactment of the distressing 911 call from Carl the night of Anna's death, just nine short months after they wed. You can hear the full episode and follow Anna's story by searching for Death of an Artist wherever you get your podcasts. We've arrived at the threshold of our terrible story. Sunday, September 8th, 1985, a mere nine months after their wedding. There's a lot we don't know about that evening. Here are a few things we know for certain. We know that Anna never moved her things as she had planned to. We know that the unhappy couple spent the evening at Carl's place an apartment on the 34th floor of a relatively new luxury high-rise in Greenwich Village. That night, like New Yorkers everywhere, they ordered Chinese food and watched TV. Then, sometime after 5 a.m., a passerby on the street below heard a woman scream, no, no, no. A moment later, there was a sound like an explosion on the roof of the deli below Carl's apartment. Anna had fallen from above. Carl called 911 at 5.29 a.m. We don't have the tape of that call. After the verdict, the whole trial record, including the call, was sealed. But a reporter who heard it played at trial said Carl Andre's voice was distressed, that he wailed, and that his explanation was interrupted with cries and moans. We've asked voice actors to read parts of the transcript of the 911 call. Police, where's the emergency? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, my wife has committed suicide. <laughs> Say again. My, my wife has committed suicide. Carl gives the address, his phone number, and says they're on the 34th floor. The operator asks, what happened exactly? What what happened was uh, we had a, my wife is an artist and I'm an artist and we had a quarrel about the fact that I was more um, exposed to the public than she was. And she she went to the bedroom and I went after her and she she went out of the window. She jumped out of the window. How long ago did this happen? Well, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. It was, uh, I don't 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 know. know. They talk for several more seconds. Did it happen recently? Did it happen just now? No, it it happened just now. I mean, I I can't I can't tell you. Okay, you, you I, I don't know. I don't know. I, of the building. Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's I can't I can't help you. I can't help you. Please. Okay, we'll be there as soon as possible. Don't, please, don't hang up. Please, don't. Okay. please. <laughs> In September of 1985, I was a sophomore in college in Albany, New York. I had already walked on top of one of Carl Andre's sculptures. They were installed in nearly every museum in the country. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you how much I love them. I was completely turned on by their taboo-breaking, fuck-you energy. The severity of his metal plates lying on the floor in a simple checkerboard pattern almost struck me as punk in my younger, brasher years. I didn't learn about Anna Mendieta until years after her death, when I was well into graduate school. And even then I learned about her from a fellow student 
not through any of my professors. I was trained by art historians who believe the prime directive was to separate the life of the artist from their work. This meant no one ever said that Carl Andre was married to Anna Mendieta, much less that he was accused of murdering her. Top that off with the fact that Anna Mendieta was a Cuban immigrant, showing at a feminist gallery, working with blood, making work that summoned the idea of the Earth Goddess? Nothing could have been less cool in my philosophically inclined education that privileged theory over feeling. But during the first two decades of the 21st century, the world changed a lot and fast. And I think I did too. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. At this moment and where we are right now is a resurgence from where the civil rights movement left off. President Trump is defending a temporary travel ban for seven Muslim-majority countries. Is a monument to white supremacy. Thousands of women are using two words on social media to identify themselves as survivors of sexual harassment and assault today. It's hashtag MeToo. We still believe in hell. I found myself thinking about Anna because she did go on to become a Frida Kahlo-like figure, more powerful after her death than before larger than life, revered. Scores of artists, mostly women, studied her, reenacted her performances, paid homage to her with their own work. They make pilgrimages to the important sites of her life, Havana, Iowa City, Rome, Greenwich Village. And over the years, I came to love Ana Mendieta's art because it felt so urgent, so relevant, because politics did start to feel personal and identity does matter. But could I love Mendieta's work while also still being a fan of Carl Andre's sculptures? Or did I have to choose sides? It felt like the only way to answer that question was by asking another. What really happened the night Anna died? I wondered what we might be able to learn if we returned to her story when we first started making this podcast, I assumed folks would want to talk about what happened between Anna and Carl. Man, was I wrong. That was a preview of Death of an Artist, a new show from Pushkin Industries, Something Else, and Sony Music Entertainment. You can hear the full episode and more from Death of an Artist wherever you get podcasts.